Hello and welcome to the first recording in the series that I'm starting. Um, this series will be about Windows Enterprise deployment, specifically talking about uh, Windows 10 deployment in the enterprise. Um, I know a lot of people um, have different questions uh, regarding uh, how to move to Windows 10 in their enterprise, what tools are available, what features are available, um, if you're thinking of moving to Windows 10 in the enterprise. So what I'm looking to do with this series is to cover a lot of these questions. Um, specifically what I'll be doing um, with this particular model is just doing demonstrations. So uh, don't expect a lot of explanations um, in, in this particular video. So for explanations, we have a uh, hangout where we are actually go into details and discuss and uh, technologies between ourselves uh, and share knowledge within ourselves. So I can I can show you where the page for that is. So if you if you someone who uses Google Plus, um, if you go on um, the Google Plus website and just look for the group called MCSC 2012 Study Group, and we have a very active group here where we actually um, meet on particular days of the week to actually. Um, discuss sort of like a video conferencing style where we discuss different technologies and different um, system administration issues. So let's get into what we're doing today. So to bring up what the lab that I'll be using for this demo, what it looks like. So currently I have, I have two machines here. So I'll be adding more as we go. So one is called Lone Client 1. The other one is called Lone Client 5. And we have a domain controller called Lon DC1, which of course does the authentication. And how these systems con are connected together, uh, very sweet. I've got a nice, um, pretty Cisco switch here. Okay. So what we'll be doing um, is we, on Lon Client 1, we already have Windows ADK installed already uh, for Windows 10. And what we'll be doing is we'll be, we'll be using the tools that Windows ADK provides. We'll be using that to create a custom um, boot image and then um, using the custom boot image we're going to um, deploy a reference computer which will be our long client 5 and then after deploying the reference computer we're going to capture the image which we can deploy to all the machines so just to make that a bit clearer because i know that that could be confusing the way i said that is uh, we have this machine which which will basically be uh sort of like the machine that we'll be using for the administrative tasks, which is Lone Client 1. Lone Client 5 is a machine that we're going to install um, Windows 10 on it in an unattended fashion. So after deploying Windows 10 on it, we'll make the customizations that we want in our enterprise, and then we'll capture that image, and then we'll use that image to deploy other machines in our enterprise. So this is a pretty common thing um, and uh, let, let's just get into it. It'll become clearer um, as we go. So the first thing I will do is, of course, we'll create a custom boot image like we mentioned. So I'm on Wind, I'm on um, Lone Client 1, which is a Windows 10 machine. I have already installed Windows ADK. Uh, you can see that by going, if I go into C program files, Oh, the other one, C program files x86. And you can see Windows kit here, and you can see I've got version 10 installed. Um, yeah, so I've got Windows ADK installed there. So, um, let's get right into it. So, the first thing we want to do is if I click the start button here, you can click all labs here. And one good little tip for Windows 10 is you can actually click on one of these letters at the top here, it's gonna sort of like zoom out. Where we have like all these letters and I can select the one I want, which is Windows Kits in this case. So if I select W for Windows Kits, and I can open the command line for deployment and imaging tools environment. So we'll get into Windows Imaging Configuration Designer, which is really, really cool. And you really, really love the features for this one when we get into it. It's really amazing. I love it. Um, Windows Deployment Kit. Okay, here we go. So the first thing we're going to do is just create the boot image. So I'll use copy PEMD64 because we want the 64-bit boot image. And I'll put that 
inside this folder my machine called wimp 64 and that may take a while to complete so I may pause the recording and then come back once this finishes okay this completed already so if I bring up and um, this machine and I go to the E drive actually I go under wimp 64 and you can see the files that it's copied there. So if I go under the media folder, and under the media folder, I can go on the uh, sources, and there I can see the Win file, the Windows image file, which contains the boot files. Um, okay, so the next thing that we'll do is we actually mount this image, and then after we mount the image, we'll make certain modifications. Um, which will, will I'll describe the modifications that we make. So basically, we'll inject driver into the boot image, and then we'll um, add certain optional components to it. So let's get into that. So if I bring a partial, so that's one other one other good advantage of this latest version of Windows ADK is actually support for partial, which is good because many admins that's like the sort of default scripting language so run that as an administrator and then once the environment comes up so the environment is up now and So mount the image that we just created. So that's mount Windows image. Specify the part of the image that we created just right now. So that's WinP64. the media directory and under the sources directory and we have a boot.wimp file here okay so index part just specifying the exact uh, image that we'll be using in this file because you could have multiple images in a single file and we we'll specify the part that we want to mount it so in this case we want to mount it to this part of win p64 in this mount directory here so that's where we want to mount it so parts is i'm presented to that and actually if we look in this we can see yep and there we go so it's basically just mounting um this put image and mounting it in this directory and then what we can now do is we can do what what is called offline servicing so in other words, we've not deployed this um, particular image to a machine. What we'll do is offline, we can inject drivers into it. We can add components into it. Okay. So to add the drivers, um, I've got some Hyper-V drivers, just some default Hyper-V drivers um, already copied on this machine and yeah so these drivers that we already have here i'll be injecting them into the image so let's go for so in the past usually we'll do this with a command line tool called uh, dism is what we usually use but now that we have powershell support why not use powershell we use the powershell anyway Add Windows driver. We we'll specify the part of um, the mounted boot image. We we'll specify the part of the mounted boot image, and then we'll go. Yep, and then. To avoid us having to do this one after the other, we can specify the recourse 
which means just go through everything that's in the directory the request switch and we can to avoid us getting our messages if it encounters any unsigned drivers we can use the switch force unsigned if i present that there then what's actually going to do is going to take all these drivers in an offline mode in the directory where the drivers exist and it's going to inject all these drivers into our boot image offline so once this finishes i'll come back and then we'll carry on with the remaining modifications uh, which will involve us adding optional components into this boot image ah, actually that's finished now i didn't take that long okay so that's finished now it's injected these drivers into this boot media and, and all this is done offline so the next thing that um, will happen is let's go ahead and just add optional components um, into this so to do that i'll need to go to the directory where the components are so the directory if i go on this machine if I go to the c drive program files x86 under the windows kits under the 10 directory under assessment and deployment kit and under windows pre-installation environment emd64 so we're dealing with the 64-bit image and win PEOCS. And here we have several CAD files um, which are different optional components that we can add into our boot image. So I'll just copy this part from here and I'll just use change directory here. Uh, okay, let's clear the screen, <laughs> make it better change directory to that directory and I need to put that in quotes because once you have a space you have to put that in quotes and there we go um, so we're there already so now we have to add the packages and the command to do that is add windows package Again, specify the part of the mounted boot image, which is E, WinP64, the mount directory. And then specify the package part itself, which is in the folder that we've currently specified. So there are four different components that we want to add. So the first one I want to add is um, uh, winnet so let me, let me type that in win pe yeah so that's the, this particular uh, component is it's sort of like a minimal version of the .NET framework the microsoft.net framework it's not like the full version but it, it does support um just allow us to be able to run certain applications that use .NET framework within windows pe so that's the first one that we'll add this will take a while to complete so i'll pause the recording and then I'll come back uh, once it's completed. Okay, so that just finished now. So that took about seven minutes to complete. Um, so once that's completed, let, let's add the other package. So the other package that we want to add is the WinPE WMI, which basically just adds WMI support. Um, so that should be quick. I can expect that to be long. And then the other one that we'll add is we'll add support for Windows scripting host, uh, which will allow us to be able to run things like VBScript within the boot image, within the WinP environment. Yeah, that should complete very shortly. And all these, so the, the beauty of all this is that we, we didn't need to um, install or we didn't need to start up the WinP environment and be doing all this and then try to capture we're doing all this offline and WinP scripting.cav which had support for windows scripting host and the last one that we'll have support for is windows powershell so it actually means we can use we can use powershell commands from within windows pe which is really nice
So once this completes, the next thing that we'll do is we'll actually, because we've done all the customizations that we want to do for now, we've injected the Hyper-V drivers, we've added this option, this four optional component, we'll actually dismount the image and save it. So here's where you have to be careful, because if you have um, this, if you have the folder where you've mounted the image open in any way that may cause failure so make sure that you close so don't have this opened in any way make sure that you have this closed completely um to avoid um, that process failing okay and the command to do that is dismount image Oh, sorry, dismount Windows image. I will specify the part of the mounted image, which is again that's our E drive, that's WinP64, and that's the mount directory. And then we'll specify because we've made changes now offline. What do we want to do with those changes? We want to save them. So dismount Windows image, specify the path to your customized um, mounted boot image and save and if you press enter and just wait for that to complete so again i'll pause the video and once this completes i'll come back and then we'll proceed and that's completed successfully so now we've successfully dismounted and saved our image uh, our boot image so the next thing that we'll do is we'll just make an, an high so file out of that boot image and the command to do to, to do that is called um make win PE media which is the next thing that we'll do so i have to go back to the command prompt for this first of all let me make a directory where we're going to store it so i'll make a directory on the e here so this is the one that will so if i'm um, dismounted it so you can see it anymore it's saved all the customizations there so the next thing we have to do is if i go make directory So just make a quick directory so it's put iso so that's where i want to start the put the iso file that i'll be creating make win pe media forward slash iso and then i specify the the directory ISO and then specify the name of the ISO file, which in this case I'll call WinPE x64 on ISO just to keep it simple and enter. And that should carry on and create the ISO file here. So that's nice, and that's all done. This takes me to the end of this demonstration. And so, in the next demonstration, I'll be showing you how to create um custom answer files which we'll use to install our reference image um, in an unattended fashion and so i hope you've enjoyed this demonstration and i'll see you in the next demonstration thanks bye